Alrighty, it looks like we are live. So very first, welcome. If you're watching live or if you're watching on replay, be sure to comment hashtag live or hashtag replay in the comments below. You're also going to see me looking this way too. I've got a whole lot of notes. I want to make sure that I get across to make sure that I'm not like just getting off in the weeds on my stories like I can sometimes get. Um, and there are a couple cool things that I want to go over with you guys because this is going to greatly impact you guys so that you're not spinning your wheels, trying to get fit and not living the life that I was living and stuck in for so long. Very first thing that I want to give you guys is that I am giving away 10 copies, 10 copies of my book. My book is called food, love and fat loss, the most comprehensive guide to losing fat and not flavor. So for the first 10 people who are willing to write a review for the book for me, if you're interested, comment below right now, free book in all caps in the comments, and I will DM you the link. All you got to do is just commit to review, giving an honest review of the book whenever you've read it, um, which helps greatly so that people can kind of know that this is a real book designed to help real people and uh, based on 19 years of fitness coaching. So thank you guys for joining. Uh, again, just be sure to comment. Um, free book below and I will DM you the link for that and the details. So, all right, guys, without further ado, I want you guys to know a couple different things. Obviously, as you saw in the title of this live, I have now been a fitness coach for just shy of 20 years in 2005 in January, or excuse me, January of 2025 will be 20 years for me. That's right. Yesterday I turned 39, so I'm not a spring chicken anymore. And uh, I've got a little bit of experience, but more than anything is my specific areas of where I've got expertise, I believe can really help you out if you are like me, that you are not the type of person who wants to turn into a gym rat or a jock, or you don't want to commit your life to eating rabbit food and clean eating all the time. I am a food lover. I can't stand some of the typical fitness, you know, nomenclature and just the just the feel and the culture of all that where it's bragging about how clean you eat and how disciplined you are. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I I don't have a lot of discipline. It's my Joyfully Fit 365 system that allows me to stay fit because that structure is so good without having the discipline that so many other people have. So, that's my story what I'm going to share with you what I've overcome, been through, et cetera. I will do my best to absolutely keep this as concise as possible. Let me know if I'm speaking too quickly for you guys, and I'll slow that down just a little bit too. I just want to be respectful of you guys' time as well. So very first thing is that I want you guys to know is that I'm a geek. I'm not a jock. I'm not an athlete. I never have been. I never will be, <laughs> okay? So growing up, I would have been the last person that you chose for a kickball team, uh, and probably the first person that you would want to cheat off of to get straight A's, okay? I was shy, I was quiet, and I hated how I looked and how I felt in my own skin. I don't know about you guys, but maybe you can relate. Let me know in the comments if you've been there, where you just hate how you look and feel in your own skin. And again, I, I strongly, strongly want to give solutions for these things because I was miserable, depressed and anxious and all these different things. And I just had such crappy self-esteem. I want to help you to overcome that without all the, you know, the current bull crap that goes on within the fitness space of, you know, the, I mean, again, I, I, the last thing I want to do is offend people, but I am going to be honest. Chemicals like Ozempic, um, you know, doing these fad diets, crash diets, you know, uh, supplements where you're committing to drinking shakes all day to lose weight. Guys, if these are the sort of things that you're doing, the, the quickest way is to lose weight is almost guaranteed the quickest way for you to regain that weight again. So I want to share some of these things with you so that you're not stuck in that same trap that I was in forever. So let's make sure I can, there we go, that you guys can see me, all right? Um, so with, with that being said, I, you know, I, I recall a friend and this is, you know, this is hard to share, um, some of this because it's embarrassing, but it, I, I don't want to, I don't want to let my embarrassment hold me back from you guys getting the benefits of what I've learned, just like my clients. So I recall a friend in middle school who shares with me how a girl, uh, came up to him and said how I was cute. And he, and he says, I know. Words I never usually say, right? And that was his comment to me where he's just like, you know, I couldn't believe it either, but she said it. <laughs> and then she, then he proceeds to laugh at my expense. So needless to say, I kind of laughed at my own expense as well. And, you know, was more embarrassed, even though I should have kind of, 
you know, been like, whoa, a, a girl finally thinks that I'm attractive. Instead, it was such an embarrassing situation. I just remember thinking like, man, this absolutely sucks. You know, I realize that I'm not a jock. I realize I'm not the most popular. I'm not any of that stuff. But wow, coming from a friend, you know, you're going to rip me down after somebody has given me a compliment. This sucks. I was over it. Okay. So from as long as I can remember, all I wanted was to get married, have a business and do something that I'm skilled at, but in a way that helps other people so that I'm adding value to the world. And the thing of it is, is I had this giant, giant mindset, unfortunately, that, um, you know, prevented my self-esteem from pushing me forward to those things and it held me back hardcore. So the way that my perception was, I was invisible to girls. I was seen as a geek to the guys. I was unrelatable to them, you know, because I was this academic, a musician. And a lot of times too, a lot of guys would even say that, well, you're, you're more like girls are. And, and whenever the, the response was normally because I like conversation, I could give a crap about sports and I want to talk about music. I want to play music. And I was into poetry and art and things that are not really considered to be all that cool in middle school and high school for a male. Okay. So for me, it was a challenge. I developed all kinds of these, um, you know, social insecurities and social anxieties because I just felt like, man, I don't belong anywhere. I don't, you know, in, in fact, I remember feeling like I actually got along better with the teachers than I did with my peers because I just felt like I was that odd and just couldn't fit in. Okay. Now, again, this is hard to share, but how many of you guys can relate even a little bit where you have felt like, you know what? Like, I, I just don't know where I belong. I don't fit in, whether that's because of insecurities or physicalities or whatever. If you can relate, drop a comment below if you feel comfortable enough to do it. For me, this was devastating, though. So going through middle school, I just remember feeling just like, I am so awkward. I'm never going to fit in. And if I can't fit in and have normal conversations with people, how am I ever going to get a wife? How am I ever going to run a successful business? I feel so uncomfortable in my skin. So, of course, my dad had been pleading with me to start working out, to get in shape and said, look, this will change everything for you. And of course I kind of believed it, but I just didn't see that as me. I'm like, you know, I don't play sports. I'm not this guy. I just couldn't picture it. So nevertheless, it was that following year that I had enough and I decided to get my dad's help with starting to work out in hopes that somehow it would do what he said, that it would eventually help my confidence and it would help me blend in more. Because all I wanted to do is blend in. I felt like anytime I got stuck out, and again, I'm going to share all kinds of things on this story here. I remember around this time where some kid walked, you know, there were several people that I felt like I just had something about me that people just wanted to blurt out the, the worst features about me, you know, and just share them as if I was just supposed to be okay with them. And so I remember my dad kind of telling me, yes, I, I understand these things. That's why you want to get quippy and witty so that when people say these things, you've got something ready. So, of course, I got really good at that part, but it was really a bandage over the real pain that was going on. So I can remember this kid, um, you know, walking down the, you know, and of course, I regret how I did this, but he walked down the hallway and he just kind of looks at me and goes, you've got a huge nose. Of course I do. So I, of course, in my insecurities, I doing what my dad taught me, I was like, I looked at him and, you know, of course how he was, he's making fun of me, but he was this big, you know, big heavy kid that was, wasn't in good shape, but he was, you know, you could tell big, strong bully type kid. And so out of my mouth said, well, so you need a bra. <laughs> this is not a Christian way to do things, guys. I wasn't living my best life for God, but that was what came out of my mouth out of defense. And I went home and told my dad and he said, well, what happened? And I said, I could tell I hurt this kid's feelings. And he's like, well, that's going to happen. I felt horrible. I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to just be the quippy response because somebody was hurting my feelings. I wanted to have more security so that those things, I didn't need that. I didn't need to hurt other people in retort of them hurting me. I just wanted to feel better about myself and know what I know now. That it's not often that we get criticized from people above us, people who have done more than we have. It's from people who have done less. And that's the idea. So for me, of course, this was kind of the beginning where I go, you know what? I don't want this life anymore. I don't want to live like the world lives where it's like, you know, I'm going to hurt you before you hurt me or I'm going to hurt you right back and all of this stuff. I just wanted to feel better and have confidence in who I was and know that I was here for a purpose. So nevertheless, of course... This 
this goal that I had started changing everything. So what happened was my freshman year of high school, I got pretty dang fit using my dad's methods, okay, which were all based on simplicity and believe it or not, enjoyment. He would always tell me like changing the smallest things in your workouts are going to affect, you know, whatever muscles you're working. And he just had this way of keeping it very fun. He didn't want me working out more than three times a week. And he always kept my workouts 30 minutes and under where they were intense, but they just felt like they were just over so quickly. And little by little, that self-confidence that I felt from this fitness transformation began to give me the confidence and made me actually feel more attractive. And it was it was weird that guys started coming up to me uh, nonstop in gyms, different areas, and they would ask me like, hey man, I don't mean to, you know, to bother you. I don't want to sound this way, but how did you get this way? How did you get fit? And how old are you? And at the time I'm 15. And, and so I began sharing with them what I had gone through. And it was then that I knew that I wanted to become a personal trainer and eventually a fitness coach because I wanted to help out people who battled the same insecurities that I had battled, the anxiety, the overthinking, the social uncomfortability and the, the awkwardness and all of these things and to help them feel how I finally got to feel. So I, I remember specifically that there was a, another kid in freshman year of high school who he was kind of getting bullied a lot. He was skinny, um, you know, unathletic, just like how I was. It was like looking in a, you know, in a time capsule mirror, if you will. And I, he began asking me questions and I just told him like, look, this is where, you know, I don't get into fights. I don't get picked on. I don't anything. I just have this confidence now and that confidence just kind of just pushes back uh, against those sort of things. And so I remember helping him out and within a year, he had this awesome transformation and his confidence went through the roof. It was amazing. And it just secured the fact that like I felt better about helping him than I did about my own transformation. And when I started sharing that with my dad at the time, we kind of knew, and I shared that with my, my uh, at the time, my girlfriend, which is now my wife, Lauren, in sharing these things, and, and we kind of knew that maybe there was something that was coming up, something that was going to allow me to step into this fitness space, even though I was an academic, even though I was a musician, an artist, and had no desire to ever be athletic, I wanted to help people to feel confident whether they were jocks and, and lost their way or whether they were like me and they were that geeky academic that just felt like they didn't fit in, okay? So with that being said, I noticed more often than not that so many people would say, I'd love to look like you and to get fit, but I'm, I'm sure you have to eat like a monk and I'm sure you probably have to work out nonstop, right? And that was the biggest thing that I heard all the time, okay? Not just in high school, but after high school, I can remember being at restaurants and people would come up and be like, wow, you're fit. And they would say something like that and be like, what are you doing eating what you're eating? And they would always say it like that because they would look down. They would see me and go, okay, well, you're fit. And then they would check my food almost instinctively to see if I was eating healthy, you know? And so every time they would look at my food and they would go, well, wait a second, what are you doing eating that? And it was almost that judgmental, just shock. And I would say like, well, what did you expect me to be eating? Well, I don't know, you know, chicken and broccoli and sweet potatoes. Like, and I'm like, you mean like a bodybuilder? Well, yeah. I'm like, yes, I've done that before. Okay. I've done that. And it was tedious. It was monotonous. It was grueling. And it really damaged my relationship with food so much so that it just didn't allow me to get fitter. In fact, the most overweight I ever got was in my 20s, late 20s, and it was because I was so stressed and focused on perfection in the diet space, okay? Not where you want to be. So what happened is most were shocked that I only worked out three times a week and at the time only for 40 minutes or less, usually 30 minutes or less. And so in 2005, I finally stepped into this role as becoming a full-time personal trainer. Yes, I'm old. I'm almost 20, 20 years in this fitness space. Like I said, I turned 39 yesterday. And with that, I realized how little I actually knew about nutrition, okay? So I knew some of the basics, but I really did not know enough. And that's what led me into 
some of the worst nutrition habits I had ever had, okay? So I tried clean eating. I tried paleo. I tried the all-fat diet, which was rebranded later as Atkins and then rebranded later um, again as what we know today as keto. It's only minor differences. I did the zone diet, the zone paleo diet, Atkins, Mediterranean, low-carb, low-fat. Um, I mean, you name it. The only healthy thing I ever did was body for life, and it it was healthy because it was balanced, even though it didn't really go through what causes fat loss, it was balanced. And that's what sparked the interest to say, well, wait a second, this program isn't about food avoidance, it's about eating the right things for your goals and your lifestyle so that the principle is, is that if you're enjoying the process that gets you fit, that's going to keep you fit indefinitely because you're not going to deviate from that plan if you enjoy it. And that's what I was after. So with that being said, I found that each of those diets were hurting my relationship with food um, more and more and getting me further and further from my goals and my dream life of being fit without living like a fitness monk to do it. Okay. So of course, after a few years, I got my nutrition specialist certification, and my gosh, were my eyes open to the truth, okay? I learned what mattered most for nutrition, what didn't matter at all, and how to get into safe energy deficits for fat loss, and after each cutting phase, I also figured out how to incrementally increase calories back up to my preferred and more sustainable calorie level. What that meant for me and my clients was that my metabolism stays high, and of course, I'm less likely to deviate from my plan. Why? Because most people, guys, they go through what's known as metabolic adaptation. That's just a fancy way of saying that you've got metabolic slowing or metabolism slowing. And all this happens is when you are eating low calories all the time, you're sending your body the signal to adjust to those low calories, okay? Especially if it's more of a crash diet like most people do. So when you're eating low calorie, your body is adapting to the stimuli you're giving it, and therefore your body is simply adapting, okay? Lance is giving me 1,300 calories a day even though he's asking me to do the same running, the same workouts, the same thinking, the same chores and activity, and if I don't want him to starve, this is if my body, if my body can think. So the body decides that it's going to slow down or downregulate the metabolism, meaning how many calories I burn, starts getting lower. What that means, and many of you guys have experienced this, you notice that you lose weight slower, you feel more lethargic, you might notice your sex drive go down, your appetite increase, all of these things begin to happen when metabolic adaptation occurs. So the solution to this is to incrementally eat more, and I learned this through that nutrition certification of becoming a nutrition specialist, it changed everything. So of course, by you know practicing this over the years with my clients, I got really good at this. And even you know, fast forward many years later, I remember having a client, I won't say her name, but this client was working out six days a week, two times a day, eating less than a thousand calories a day. And she said that every time that she would skip even one workout, she would notice weight gain, okay? Or if she even ate a little bit more than that, she would notice weight gain. So what we did was we began putting her through my metabolism protocols, and once we got done with this, she was only working out four days a week instead of, what was she doing, 10, 11, 12 days a week, uh, or 12 times a week, and we went from working out two times a day to once, and from working out 60 minutes down to 30, and we also took her from 900 calories all the way up to over 2,000. Not only did this happen, but she also lost, lost body fat. Now, I know what you might be thinking, like, well, how is that physically possible? I won't have time to get into all that on this, but if you want to learn more about the metabolic process and how that works, just shoot me a DM uh, that just says metabolism, and I'll send you over the training that I made for my clients to understand how this process works. It sounds like voodoo, sounds like magic, but it literally is just science. Um, the easiest way to say it is when you're eating more after being on, you know, going through metabolic uh, adaptation, your uh, parts of your metabolism are going to start speeding back up again, and that causes you to get yourself back into a deficit. So that's a, a really kind of, it's like a 60,000 foot overview instead of a 30. But the principle here is that through what I finally learned, 
I was able to create a lifestyle that gave me food freedom and gave my clients food freedom, okay? So I got to the point where I also really, really hated being around other fitness coaches or trainers. And the reason why is because they were so obsessed with eating clean, eating healthy, and bragging about how clean and healthy they ate and how they avoided all of the foods that I typically craved and desired. And so for me, that just didn't feel like that made sense to be around those type of people who were constantly making me feel like I was not on par with them because I don't want that. I don't want to live a life where I'm eating like a fitness monk or I'm eating rabbit food diets all the time. I want a life where I'm eating foods that, yes, will that are enjoyable, but also won't sabotage my goals and also will keep me healthy. And I know that that sounds far-fetched, but that's what I've got and that's what I've helped my clients to do. So with that being said, I started pretty much avoiding and coming into the position where I loathed the fitness industry because it was so many gimmicks and even some of the trainers and fitness coaches that I liked as a, as a person, I started feeling like I couldn't respect what they did because it was all a sham. It was all about, and I remember this one person saying this, it's all smoke and mirrors, man. We just help them to just get the fat off as quickly as possible or get this so that they look better and whatever happens after that is up to them. That felt as gross as gross could be. That's unethical. I don't like that in the slightest. I don't want to help somebody to lose weight that they're going to gain back later because I've given them a method that wasn't going to fit in their lifestyle. So with that, I started really becoming honestly just loathing of the fitness industry as a whole. I wanted to separate myself from them. I didn't want to be around them. And I dang sure didn't want to be categorized with them as well. So I started, you know, about 10 years ago, letting people know like, hey, you can call me a trainer, a coach, whatever. But if you're calling them a trainer and coach, call me something totally different because what they're doing is not effective long term. What they're doing is not ethical and it's never going to lead to food freedom. Okay, so I I don't want any part of this. So the thing of it is, is that I learned what mattered most, like I mentioned, um, to keep my metabolism up and to enjoy life. So imagine being able to eat ice cream and cookies and pizza, burgers and fries, all those things any day of the week without calling it a cheat meal, of course, you know, or sabotaging your goals. That was my life. That became my life and my client's life. And so I'm not saying that I only ate those things. Obviously, I'd be unhealthy. But since I stopped deeming foods as either bad or good and instead learn to see them as calorie dense or nutrient dense, some foods you get more of and some foods you get less of, I finally got my food freedom and felt confident in my skin for the first freaking time in my life. And it was it was amazing. That's what I help people do now. So I help the people who are like, man, I've lost weight, but I regain it because I, I just got to be honest. I can't cut out my carbs and feel good about it. Or You know, I did this and I lost weight, but Lance, I just, I couldn't live this way. And I'm sorry. I just, maybe I'm not disciplined, but I couldn't do it. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. I don't want to live like that. And I don't want to teach you to live like that either. Okay. So the reality is, is that I also, with some of the other fitness people too, they would lie about how clean they ate. Um, you know, obviously to brag about how disciplined they were which I absolutely freaking hated as well. I wanted to be around people who were after what I was. I don't want to be, I don't want fitness to be the center of my life, but I wanted it to amplify the quality of my life. And that's really in a nutshell what I do with people. I help them to get as fit as they can get in a way that people believe that they are absolute fitness junkies, but in reality, they actually live a really sustainable and food freedom style lifestyle just like I do. And that's the beauty of this. So again, I know that some of that might sound like it's too good to be true, but when you understand the math and the science of this, it's it's not hard at all. It really is so simple. Yes, you've got to have obviously a few disciplines and you've got to use a, um, you know obviously a little bit of willpower when it comes to certain things. You can't just decide like I'm just not going to track anything and I'm just going to be a free for all. But when you understand how the math and science of this works, you do get to eat foods that you want. For example, last night, um, Lauren was working, my wife, Lauren was working, um, on, you know, for my birthday, it was just a weird birthday this year. And so for me, I ordered some St. Louis style pizza, which is not super low calorie by any means. I ate, um, some sausage and some pepperoni pizza, 
you know, had some diet soda, even had a glass of wine. And today I woke up feeling just the same because what I had was within my, let's call it a food budget. I hate the word budget, but let's call it a food budget because most of you guys, if you're successful in business or in your career or you're good steward over your finances, you know what you're, what you make, what's coming in and you know what goes out. Simply put, you have an idea that you are not sending more money out than what you're making. Guys, in a nutshell, that's what fitness is too. I know how much I'm eating versus how much I'm burning and I don't get it confused. And because of that, it's basically the same as having a nice budget that gives you flexibility and yet allows you to get out of debt and stay out of debt. So that's the sort of premise there. Um, Kyle, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining in too. So the thing of it is, is that today I enjoy the foods that I love. I'm 39 years old as of yesterday, as I said. And the reality is, is that I have abs year round, even though I am an absolute food lover. And I mean food lover. I'm the person you want to cook for if you want to have your food like bragged about and where you're like and where you're getting accolades. Like I'm that guy going, oh my gosh, this is so good. I could I'm gonna do this every week. I love food that much, and I love when my clients are like me. I've got a client right now, again, I won't say her name, but she loves food as much as I do. And she's in a, what we call a reverse diet. And she's down multiple pounds on this reverse diet where we're healing. Let's say we're restoring her metabolism and people are always elated when they find out that I'm a food lover like they are. And I don't restrict them. Like they think that they're going to be restricted. So they're like, Lance, this is so easy. Are you sure this is right? Yes, it's right. (laughs) And my favorite thing is when they're like, I feel like I could do this forever. Lance, there's just no, there's no diet to cheat off of because if I want donuts today, I can have it. If I want this today, I could have it. And there are certain days where you just simply go, oh, I don't have enough today. I don't have enough calories or enough macros today to do this, but I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. No big deal. It takes us out of scarcity mindset. And now when we're in this abundance mindset where we're, we have food freedom, we're seeing results, it amplifies so much of that desire to do more. You find yourself doing these disciplined actions even though it doesn't take any discipline or willpower to do it. Guys, this is absolutely amazing. This is why I have the confidence that I have today, and yet I enjoy the foods that I that I eat. I enjoy my life. Honestly, the only things that I don't enjoy about my life are usually relational aspects where people are either excessively uh, confrontational or they're just difficult people. But outside of that, like those are the worst things about my whole life as a fitness coach because... I don't live this rigid life to stay how I stay to be in this fit lifestyle. So with that being said, I have no rigidness. I have no food avoidance. My workouts are always less than an hour. My clients are usually 30 minutes less or 30 minutes or less for their workouts. And this is how we get our dream bodies. Since most of them are not trying to get muscle size like what I want, like what I'm after, they don't have to work out nearly like what I do. I do five to six days a week. Most like my most successful clients work out three and four times a week, 30 minutes and under. You're talking about less than two hours a week. Most of my clients, 90 minutes a week in the gym. Imagine putting nine in by gym. I mean, hotel gym, home gym or wherever. I would say 80% of my clients work out in their house or in a hotel because they travel. They've got a business, etc. So imagine being able to travel to you know, to spend 90 minutes in doing workouts, you can do body weight, you know, whatever you want to do. And you, you start seeing your abs, you start seeing the lines in your arms and your legs and people coming up to you going, Susan, what have you done? Are you dieting? And when you get to say like, "Mm, no, I'm, I'm not really. And they go, well, how much weight have you lost? And you're like, well, maybe a couple pounds, but overall it's just body recomposition. Lance has taught me about you know, how body fat percentage is going to matter a lot more in body composition than weight. So I've lost probably seven pounds of fat, but I've gained four pounds of lean body mass. I feel great. I sleep better. I've got more energy. I love how I look. And I even like trying on clothes now. What a shock. I mean, these are things that my clients experience all while getting to enjoy foods like pizza, burgers, ice cream, cookies. They just know how to put that moderation in there through my system. That system is the Joyfully Fit 365 system. It's called that because it makes you joyfully fit 365 days a year, 
without a diet, okay? So this means no more diets ever again, no more rigidness, no more circus style workouts and all that crap, P90X, insanity, and oh my gosh. Guys, if you were to make me to do that in order to get fit back when, you know, 20 years ago when I got fit, I would have been like, you know, I think I'd rather just find somebody eventually that's just gonna love me for me. <laughs> even though I'm just out of shape. And I, that's just really how I felt. I didn't want it so bad that I was willing to eat like a monk. I'm not going to do that. So most of my clients, like I said, are living this life in a way that they're able to even help out other people because they understand the system. So the reality is that I love my life. I love that it also aligns with the Bible's teaching, okay, of light is the yoke and easy is the burden. That's something that when I realized that I wasn't doing that in my business, I wanted to bring that into my my nutrition and my fitness. Guys, the principles of the Bible, whether you are a you know Bible follower or not, those principles are universal. They're going to work in business. They're going to work in your fitness, etc. So most of the things that I do in my program and system I borrowed from the structure of the Bible, meaning that that's why it's so sustainable. That's why it's so enjoyable to do. And that's why I have food freedom instead of food guilt like I used to. So now I will say that I still have some insecurities, like some of my insecurities, even though I'm quote fit are like from the front. Like I like to just share all my insecurities so that you guys know I'm still working on things from the front. See, see my arms here. Shoulders aren't bad. See how thin my biceps are? It's because of the fact that I've got, I don't have enough long head of the bicep development compared to the short. And so therefore my bicep seems thinner. So if I turn to the side, not bad, but I feel still insecure about my, how my arms look from the front. Why do I share that? So you know that I don't have like, you know, I, I'm not this perfect person that is, I, all my insecurities are gone. I want to share those insecurities with you so that you know through this system, these insecurities and as I pursue the Lord, they die down and they come into check and I battle my flesh to tell my flesh, no, it doesn't matter that you feel insecure about that. You're doing the right things. And this is who you are in the Lord. And this is what you're going to do for people. Never mind. And it helps me to take the focus off of myself and put my focus back on you so I can help you. But I want you to know, though, I still have insecurities and God is helping me through those. And this system that I'm working through is making that better. So the idea here is that if you're chasing perfection, you're never going to reach where you want to, where you want to go. Perfection is an illusion and it leads to and is rooted in shame. Okay. I battled toxic shame years ago and that's what caused me to chase perfectionism. And that's what caused me to be so obsessed with physique where now I don't need to be the biggest, best, this, that, and the other. I want to be fit. I want to align my life with what the Bible teaches. And I want to make a drastic impact for everybody that comes into contact with me, whether it's because I'm doing business coaching with them or I'm doing fitness coaching with them or I'm guiding them in any other aspect. But I want people to be better because they came into contact with me. And that's what the Lord and my system has allowed me to do. Okay. All right. I'm gonna wrap this up here in just a second. So um, the bottom line is that these systems are helping me and have helped me to become healthy and to live this ideal that I've longed for. And it lasts forever because it's not rooted in shame, perfectionism, or constant discipline. And that's the idea. Yes, am I more disciplined than I was 20 years ago? You bet. I would absolutely. Hey, Kyle, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Have an awesome night. And thanks so much for joining in too. So I, I want to make sure that everybody gets that this lifestyle is not going to be incongruous with the lifestyle that you dream of having. If it is, it means that you're pursuing perfectionism and discipline more than you're pursuing balance. And that's the key. Okay. So today I get the pleasure of showing entrepreneurs and professionals like doctors, attorneys, um, architects, uh, pilots. I've worked with so many uh, salespeople. Um, I'm trying, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And I get to teach them my Joyfully Fit 365 system that helps them go from a parent bod, you might have heard it as a dad bod or a mom bod, 
into their dream physiques, but without restrictive diets, without long workouts and those circus act exercises or any of the fitness crap that you've heard me talk about that gets pushed in this fitness space, okay? So my question for you is, do you wanna know more about my system and how it works and, and if it can work for you, okay? So if that's the case, go ahead and DM me faithful fit and we'll chat a bit about your goals, a little bit about your struggles and your lifestyle to talk about if and how I can help you and if it'll work for you. So thank you guys so much for joining in. Don't forget again, I am giving away 10 free copies of my book. That book is called Food, Love, and Fat Loss, The Most Comprehensive Guide to Losing Fat and Not Flavor. Anybody, the first 10 people who are willing to write a review for the book, you will get it for free. So just drop in the comments, um, free book in all caps, and I will DM you the link for that. Just got to be willing to write a review for me. It helps me so much to show people what this is that I do and that I'm a real person who loves food and enjoys being lazy at times. I you know, I, I can't stress enough, guys, that like I am not this fitness person that most people would think where all I do is talk about exercise and 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 I'm, you know, and, and just live. I, my gosh, I mean, I, I don't have time to go in on all the stuff that used to just annoy the crap out of me. But I mostly like if you look behind me here, you'll see my guitar and my other guitar and my piano and it's, and, you know, my books and all of this like. I want to live life as a fit person without being obsessed with fitness. And if that's you, I would love to chat with you a little bit more about if and how I can help you. So thank you guys so much. I know this was a long live. I just wanted to show up here and just show up for you guys and talk with you guys a little bit um, and be vulnerable about what I've been through and some of the things that where my beliefs and just kind of how I am about things. If it resonates and you want to chat some more, shoot me a DM. Do you have a question that maybe you, you, you want to know about or get some clarity on? Shoot me a DM or drop a comment below and I will answer that in either the stories or DM with you as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been awesome. Can't wait to see you guys on the next one. I'll see you guys later. Have an awesome night.